We want to welcome you to the Interprofessional Education and Clinical Simulation Center at UT Health Science Center and provide some basic information to make this a rewarding experience. The goal for all participants in the IPEC Center is to develop both individual and team skills that are needed to provide safe, efficient, and timely patient and family-centered quality care. All of the simulation rooms in the center are equipped with various high-fidelity mannequins and medical equipment to provide as realistic of an actual clinical environment as possible. All individuals are requested to participate as if the environment is an actual clinical setting. This center serves as a safe environment for you, the learner, to gain knowledge and expertise. As you enter the rooms, you will see hand sanitizer and multi-size gloves available. Please utilize these supplies as appropriate. For communication purposes, each of the rooms has a functioning telephone. You can utilize the telephone to make a request for additional patient information or resources, such as patient lab results or to be connected to the patient's attending physician. All equipment in the simulation rooms is functional, including IV pumps, head walls, beds, stretchers, and defibrillators. The head walls allow simulated oxygen flow and a functional vacuum connection. The beds and stretchers are fully adjustable. Just as in actual practice, the headboards and footboards on the beds are removable for emergency situations. Within each patient room is a sharps container to be used for IV needles and syringes. For the purposes of education, we often recycle IV syringes and at times we may ask you to place these in the lower portion of the needle container, which is our recycle reuse bin. The center staff will remind you of recycling instructions before your session begins. In each of the rooms, there is a patient monitor which can display the cardiac rhythm, blood pressure, oxygen saturation, and many other patient hemodynamic values. Many of our rooms also have an iPad mounted on the wall to provide additional patient data, such as possibly an x-ray or an image of a wound or a certain type of skin lesion. There is a whiteboard available in each room as a place for you to actually document patient findings, things that you might want to jot down such as the patient's vital signs or maybe some pertinent clinical information as the scenario is unfolding. In many of the educational experiences, a defibrillator might be needed. This is an actual functioning defibrillator, so safety is of highest priority. You attach the hands-free paddles to the studs on the mannequin's chest. For safety, set the defibrillator on the lowest joules reading, about two joules. We ask that you leave it on this lower joule setting so that very little energy is dissipated into the mannequin. Please remember to use proper defibrillator safety when the current is released by utilizing a stand clear, all clear signal. On the crash cart, the defibrillator resides on the top of the cart and the backboard is mounted on the side. The top drawer of the cart includes the emergency medications. The second drawer of the cart has IV supplies. The third drawer of the cart includes airway supplies such as endotracheal tubes, laryngoscopes, and blades. The fourth drawer has a stethoscope and a pen light. The fifth drawer has personal protection equipment supplies. The bottom drawer has airway supplies such as bag valve mask, non-rebreather mask, and nasal cannulas. Please use all the cart equipment as is needed, including the medications, during your simulation educational experiences. The IPEC Sim Center has a host of different age mannequins ranging from newborn to adult. The mannequins are controlled by Sim technicians from a centralized control station. The features of the Sim Man 3G include eyes that can open and blink and pupils that can dilate. The mannequin has the capacity to cough, moan, really and even bad. speak conversationally. Starting with the head and neck, 
Pulses can be palpated bilaterally at the carotid, radial, femoral, popliteal, posterior tibialis, dorsalis pedis, and at the left brachial locations. For auscultation skills, there are pre-recorded heart and lung sounds and bowel sounds, and these can be auscultated both anteriorly and posteriorly. An external EKG monitor can be attached using the four available tabs on the mannequin chest. Defibrillation can be performed with either traditional or hands-free paddles. Blood pressure can be assessed utilizing the left arm of the mannequin. An oxygen saturation probe can be placed on either the left or right hand. Airway intubation and cricotomy can be performed. The mannequin can perspire, cry real tears, froth from the mouth and nose, and may even excrete urine. There is an IV access on the right arm and an IO access in the sternum and the left tibia. Decompression of a pneumothorax and insertion of chest tubes may be performed in the thoracic cavity. When CPR is performed on the mannequin, the technology is able to assess the provider depth, rate, and hand position during the CPR technique. We hope that this information and orientation video is very helpful and assist in your simulation experience. Please be sure to let the IPEC staff know if you have any additional questions.